start it. Okay. Let's start in another two minutes. Let's wait for a few more to join and then we'll start. Okay. Two minutes. Okay, let's start. So, see. if you guys can see me, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, the session was actually. Shokat, can you hear me now? Shokat, can you hear me now? And Shokat asked a question, sir. Your video is not coming. Okay. So, <coughs> I will share my screen. Wait. Okay, so guys, the thing is that uh, 
uh, a lot of us, you know, uh, when having online classes, we have this, you know, uh, uh, practice of uh, putting the questions or anything in the chat. It is there in the chat <coughs> and the teacher can see the chat and he can answer it. Okay. So, but, you know, for some technical problems, I find that difficult, you know. So, if you have any questions, please uh, speak it out and uh, speak out your question that we have. And uh, if you have to respond like, yes, you no, know, please do it verbally okay, so that I can hear you. Okay. So. Shokat, are you still not able to hear my voice? Noel, can you hear my voice? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Ashish. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Are you writing, writing answers or not? No, sir. No, sir. You stopped writing answers for prelims. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Fine. 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 You know you can you can uh, do a little lesser of answer writing, but you should not totally give it up. And uh, after prelims, you again you know you have to gather speed. Fine. So um, we'll start because it's just a one hour session, not a very lengthy session, just a one hour session. So we'll not uh, delay anymore and we'll start. Okay. So uh, this session is about, you know, how to score well in anthropology. What are the things in anthropology that help you score well? Okay. So I think everyone can see my screen. Ashish, you, you, you guys can see my screen now? Huh? Yes, sir. All fine. Take it, take it. Chalo. So let's start. Okay. So. Okay. Hmm. So scoring good in anthropology. So first, you know, what are the things that help us uh, score good in anthropology or why a lot of people are scoring so good in anthropology or why so many people are attracted to this op optional. So sir, you have to understand. Yeah. So first of all, what does scoring good mean? Like what is the good score? What is the good score means? Okay, fine, 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 fine. So uh, for those <coughs> who have been following you know, UPSC dream for quite some time and going you know, uh, through the toppers blogs and toppers videos and all, you would know that a good score. So even 250 is not a bad score in UPSC, but if you get 300 plus, if you have get 300 plus out of 500, that is your optional subject. Optional subject is 250, 250, two papers of 250 each, paper one, paper two. And if you get out of this 500 total, if you can score 300 or more, 300 plus, you improve your chances of, you know, uh, getting an interview call. Because if you just compare, you know, the marks of people who clear the exam, the toppers, uh, you'll see that any decent student who has done a decent preparation, their GS 1, <coughs> 2, 3 marks will be similar. Similar, not very far off, you know. So all of them will get, you know, suppose for example, 90 से 110 के बीच में, you know, या फिर 100 से 120 के बीच में ऐसा उनका marks का range रहेगा, that kind of a range they will have. Okay. Uh, what makes difference is three things make a lot of difference. GS4 makes a diff lot of difference because GS4 is where some people get too low, some people get too high, some people may get 60, and some people some some people may get 130, 140. A massive margin in GS4. Mein. A lot of people ignore GS4, but it is, makes a lot of difference. Okay. Then you have your essay. Essay paper again, something that is ignored by a lot of people thinking that essay we have been writing throughout our school and college, but this essay is not that essay. No, this essay, mein, uh, if you don't write like a creative thinker, a creative writer, then you may not get very good marks. Just giving the facts, just giving the facts and figures like a GS answer just giving pros and cons and a conclusion introduction that will be good for GS, but for not for essay. For essay, there has to be some creativity in your writing and people may end up getting as low as 50 <coughs> or as high as 150 or 160 even, you know, in essay. Massive difference. And uh, then the third thing that makes a lot of difference is the optional subject. So you'll see very few people can get an interview call if they have very poor marks in optional. Optional marks are a big determinant, you know. So 
you know, 250, 250. This optional is equal to two GS papers. It is equal to two GS papers, you know, in the total marks. And if you can get 300 plus, very high chance of you getting interview. Okay. So 300 is what we will consider as a very good score. And that should be the aim. Okay. Yeah. So that answers the question about good score. Yes, sir. Got okay. It. Thank you. Okay. No, yeah. So now <coughs> anthropology. First thing is, you know, some myths about anthropology. Uh, one myth is it's a very short syllabus. A lot of people say, hey, anthropology really. syllabus is very small. Take anthropology and pass. No, that's a myth. UPSC taking exam for such a prestigious, you know, uh, such prestigious posts. They will not do this kind of a blunder that, you know, one optional subject syllabus is massive, never ending and other optional subject syllabus is too short. No, not like that. The syllabus, if you compare the length of the syllabuses, thoda, chota bada, some history and geography may seem a little lengthier. Anthropology and sociology are very short, not like that. No, that's a myth. But still, you know, when someone says ki it is easily finishable, there is some truth behind that. So it is, if you go point-wise, okay, point, these many points are there in paper one, these many in paper two, the syllabus is quite lengthy. But what helps us to finish this thing quickly and revise it quickly because it is really revisable. You know, a lot of people say that this is the only optional that you can revise not once, but twice in the five, six days gap that you are getting nowadays in your mains exam. In the mains exam, if you see the routine for the last four or five years, um, <clears throat> before the optional day exam, there is a four, five days, five, six days gap. And you can revise anthropology at least, no, not at least, but if you put some effort, you can revise surely for once, but also maybe twice in that six day window, provided you have prepared it well, the revision. So how can we revise it so quickly? If the syllabus is not short, then how? The thing is that although the syllabus looks quite daunting, you know, its syllabus looks at of the same length as history and geography. But the thing is that the number of books to be read, number of books to be read for anthropology are very less compared to many other optionals. I give this example to many of my students. For example, history optional. I give example of history optional doesn't mean I'm demeaning history. I love history. I, I really love history, you know, and even when teaching anthropology, I keep on, you know, uh, discussing a lot of history. So I love history is one of the most beautiful subjects, but I'm giving the example of history because I have had history as optional in past. So I know a little bit about history. So I'm giving the example of history. History, modern, modern India, modern India may initially the book that was very popular was Bipan Chandra. So you read Bipan Chandra without Bipan Chandra, you cannot pass the exam, but then comes spectrum Raji Wahir, uh, spectrum book. So after that, Bipan Chandra looks not that good because spectrum is way more detailed and way more exam oriented with the points and all. Okay. Now someone tells you, you are reading spectrum, spectrum to GS wale You are, you know, is this your optional? So you should read something more critical, something more analytical. So go for Plassey to partition by, uh, by Plassey to partition. Bandhu Padhyay, Shekhar Bandhu Padhyay. Plasi to partition by Sekhar Bandhupadhyay. And you realize, yes, it is much more critical. It is much more critical analysis is given. So now you are in a fix. Ki kya kare? Do I read spectrum? Do I read this? So like this, you know, for every part, for world history, do I read normal law? Do, do I read this? For example, you know, <coughs> ancient, do, do I read uh, R.S. Sharma? Do I read uh, Upinder Singh? Do I read A.L. Basham? The wonder that was India. Do I read this? Do I read that? For medieval history, do I read Satish Chandra? Do I read uh, this one guy, very popular guy? I'm forgetting his name. Or I read, you know, for ancient, do I read Romila Thapar and all? So, so many books because it's a very old subject, old discipline. So, a lot of scholars, a lot of opinions, a <coughs> lot of books. So, very difficult, you know. Um, but that is not the case with anthropology. The number of books are very limited. 
for physical anthropology peenath some people may give another name but peenath standard book for say example tribal india nadi masnan is very standard book you can read another book but nadi masnan is very much standard archaeology one book this one book for every part of the syllabus you have just one book at the most you may try to refer to some additional sources but even when referring to additional sources or even for example the main book for example peenath peenath is the main book for physical anthropology or biological anthropology you don't have to read cover to cover for history optional you cannot think of leaving you know just one second guys one second in history optional you cannot think of you know uh, not reading a book cover to cover if you are reading upinder singh for ancient india cover to cover read karna hai if you are reading spectrum cover to cover but in anthropology no book has to be read cover to cover you know only at certain parts in pinath if you read the entire book you may be you become a semi doctor you will become half doctor but we don't want to be a doctor we want to clear the exam so not the entire book has to be read so this feature of very limited number of books and no book being read from cover to cover this is what helps you know it seems it makes the syllabus seem much shorter compared to other subjects can be finished in 3 months with some rigor it can be easily finished in 3 months even 2 and a half months you know so i know people who have uh, not studied anthropology before prelims started studying after mains and finished it do teen saal pehle 2 3 years ago it was possible because there used to be around 4 Four and a half months gap uh, between prelims and mains, but nowadays the gap is, I think, less than three months. So now you cannot do that, but still, you know, easily finishable. So that is one thing. So it is a myth that is short syllabus, but there is some truth to it that you can finish the syllabus very quickly. Second myth is the diagrams very difficult. How can you draw? how can you draw you know a skull a spine you know so many things have to be drawn the skull has to be drawn the spine has to be drawn this and that this and that so many things that diagram if you do not if you are not a very good artist if you have not been you not know, doing very good with drawing and painting from a childhood you cannot do that it's a myth the diagrams are very simple these diagrams in fact are a great added feature of anthropology that help you score good good diagrams if you can draw a good diagram it tells the examiner that you know your subject you cannot you know draw diagrams without knowing the subject nicely so you know if you have to explain any concept using diagram it means you understand the concept so well that you can express it through a diagram okay and diagrams obviously make your answer look beautiful and more aesthetic so a well level diagram is a sine qua non of anthropology and it is not difficult it's a myth that the diagrams are difficult the diagrams can be something like this so if i have to draw a skull i am to drawing a say a skull of say for example australopithecus one of our ancestors so
that is it very simple now this is and you can label the parts labeling also is an art which i would just quickly talk about so when labeling for example don't label like this guys can everyone see me and hear me and everyone can see the screen yes sir yes sir okay for it so this will help you in your gs and everywhere don't label like this all sides no don't do that don't do that try to make the diagram on one side of the screen sorry so try to make the diagram on one side and keep the labeling on the other side so here i have made the diagram a little you know to the left of your screen here so that i have left this space for labeling so labeling all my labeling will be on this side so i'll do labeling like this and uh, if you can use two different colors of pen for example i have made a diagram with the black pen i can do the labeling with the blue pen blue ball pen point pen so i can use another color i'm using red and green you can use simply you no know, black and blue and green ball pens so this will be you know, the brow ridges then like that heavy jaw massive canine so see all the labeling on one side and in a proper alignment all the labeling is like this so it's all in one line very nicely very neatly done and the lines are not like curved like this these lines are not curved they are like you no know, rectangular as a straight jacket as a straight 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 lines very nice straight lines your labeling lines will be and then you put the entire diagram inside a box don't need a scale scale and pencil with just simply with your hand you can make the box and write here the figure what the figure is about the figure is about australopithecus skull so diagram like this and with some practice you know with some practice you can make the diagrams very fast very fast you know when uh, it comes to so this topic i was talking about the australopithecus or homo erectus and all their distribution where are they located in different parts of india or in tribal part you know where are your your pastoral tribes located where you where there are hunting gathering tribes located for that you may have to draw an india map okay so india map again how to draw an india map is so difficult no it is not difficult you don't have to draw something you know that will be up you know you know perfect with perfect scale and all you just it should be resembling india so you will have lot of toppers answer sheets you can download on internet you will see the kind of pathetic maps they have drawn and still they have been toppers so you don't need to be so perfect you can just simply make you know a decent looking diagram that will be it this is very much a decent looking india map with some practice you can make it in you know 7 to 10 seconds okay even world map you can make in 10 to 15 seconds <coughs> very easy you know with proper guidance you can learn how to make them in 10 to 12 seconds so the diagrams are not a difficult part and that's a myth that diagrams are a difficult part in fact the diagrams are what help you score very good in anthropology okay third myth that it is so much of biology you have genetics you have this fossil that skull this that so you know someone who has studied science background someone who has studied especially medical science they should take it that's a myth that's a pure myth because there are so many people who have humanities background who have taken anthropology and have had no problems at all absolutely no problems the names australopithecus homo erectus or the names of different you know uh, biological terms that are there there are not too many very few and those terms are very simple uh, you you are finding the term australopithecus difficult because in, in your life earlier you have not talked about or not thought about australopithecus but when you are reading about australopithecus seeing what australopithecus looks like imagining how it was you know our ancestor walking on two feet what it was doing you know why it is called australopithecus australo means south pithecus means ape ape of the south because it was found in southern hemisphere south africa 
in a place called what was the place where it was found anthropology students heard about tong child noel you guys are not doing the homework of the class yes sir okay. homework new homework has to do yeah i had talked to read about raymond raymond dart and tong child so so why it is called australopithecus because austral means south pithecus means ape so ape, ape of the south found in the southern hemisphere so like that when you know the concept it is very easy to remember the terms you don't forget neanderthal why is it called neanderthal it was found in neander valley in germany there is a place called neander valley so that's why it's called neanderthal okay so homo erectus why erectus because erect it was the first one to stand properly erect on two feet like us so homo habilis why habilis habilis means handyman using hand making tools with hand so if you know the concept the terms are not difficult at all okay so there are so many myths about anthropology okay? and i'll add one more myth it's a recent myth that now anthropology may so many people are getting 300 plus so too many students will take it and when too many students will take it the competition will be too bad and we'll get i mean not good marks fine now for this let me talk about subjects called history how bad geography so lot of people say ki you know history of marks nahi uthta hai because so many people write history. plus history is such vast subject how bad there was a time into said it 2012 mein how bad and geography were butchered people with how bad and geography got so pathetic marks that they could not pass the exam all this are false information yes i scored badly i check with my friend he also scored badly i talk to my you know seven eight friends with geography optional out of them four five scored poorly so i just take those four five ka thing you know and i spread it you know ki kisi ne acha score nahi kiya everyone got poor marks i conveniently ignored the two three guys who had optional geography i know them who scored good but unka baat nahi i am not talking about them i just talk about those who scored poorly and then there is an opinion spread that you know this subject has done very badly this year whatever be the subject if you have done prepared well in your subject if you have written your subject well you will get marks history very difficult to score 250 nahi aata hai people don't get 220 230 se zyada but i know someone i know a guy who got ips ips ies first attempt my ips second attempt my third attempt my ies and every time he scored 290 plus in history 290 305 in history and he was a science student he was not someone doing phd in history he was a science student took up history and scored so well so this thing you know that this subject is going to you know uh, fail this year he is also duba dega because so many people so many years it is doing good so now is the next year it is going to be down those things are just you know uh, you know urban myth which has spread in the lanes of rajinder nagar and mukherji nagar don't believe in that if you do well in your subject you will get good marks as simple as that if you don't do you will not get marks theek okay? hai so now that we have discussed some of the myths regarding anthropology now let's get into the topic of uh so do you have any questions let me take some questions hello sir have, yeah sir i'm presently i'm taking coaching for anthropology sir okay sir actually so in my class so my faculty will be giving me notes sir okay so in, after after that i'll go and uh, go and study sir there i'll uh, find some extra facts and extra notes sir okay so it's it's only end, ending up becoming a big pile of notes sir like i'm not ever getting very confused like when you're taking coaching what should be the approach sir okay right so first of all you know i don't think that you should be getting too many too much notes in anthropology anthropology mein zyada notes nahi hona chahiye should not be there because there are some standard books uh four five standard books are there you wrote re, so so the, so when i am teaching i'll tell you first what i have done or what i do my notes are not very uh, much you know so they are very simple pdf files that i discuss in the class and most of the studying happens on the books itself you know because standard books are there for that because if there are standard books 
I give my notes, you do extra research from internet, everything will become so bulky that it will become equal to history or geography. If you have to take advantage of, you know, anthropology, a syllabus not being, you know, I mean, so I told about the benefits, less number of books, no book to be read cover to cover. If I have to take the ad advantage of that, I should limit myself to those less number of books, not reading cover to cover. If I keep on adding new, new material, it will become difficult. But now since you already have the notes, what you can do is, okay, now look at previous year's question papers. Okay? Last three years question papers, three to four years question papers, anthropology question papers. But have you finished reading at least once? Sir, no, sir. Still, the coaching is going on. Okay. 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 Fine. So, whichever topic is covered, so, which, which all topics, can you recall any topic that has been covered so far? Sir, paper one, almost 80% is covered, sir. Like, social culture is done, sir. Okay. Then, uh, theory part? Physical is done, sir. Theory part? Then, theories are done, sir. Okay. So yeah, so the topics that are done now on internet, if you Google anthropology, last 25 years question topic wise, you will get topic wise questions, anthropology topic wise that are arranged, not, not like, you know, 2014 paper 15, not year wise, but topic wise that these are topics from social cultural, these are topics from family, from marriage topic wise, previous years questions you get on Google. Okay. Google that and the topics that have been covered, try to go through the questions. Are you able to answer those questions with the help of your notes or are you able to answer those with the help of the standard books? So if you feel that you, if you see that you are able to answer most of those questions with the help of your notes, then just stick to your notes. Don't try to add too many stuff to that. Just keep on revising your notes and whatever you don't understand in your notes. So you read a topic in the note, you're not able to understand. Only for that topic, try to refer to other, uh, other sources like Google, YouTube. Don't add too many things. If you already know, so you, you have read the suppose marriage part from the notes and you see that you are comfortably able to answer most of the questions on marriage that have come from previous uh, years, in previous years from the notes only. So don't try to do too much headache for the marriage part. Keep it aside. Only the things, topics that you have in the notes or uh, but you are not able to that is not sufficient to answer previous years questions or that is not there in the notes but it has come in the previous years only for those topics go outside your notes and collect materials from google internet or the standard books don't duplicate okay okay sir okay and the revision will be the key you you have to revise whether it is gs or optional if you do not revise it's as good as you know reading first time for example i go to gym okay so for example i go to the gym on say first of january it's a new year resolution that i'll build a bulky you know a nice body with six pack abs so i go to gym on first january i go to first january second january third january and then i drop out and then again you know the josh comes back in on in the, in the beginning of february again i go to gym on first february second february again i drop so again march i go it do so i, I have done it three times I have started gym in January, in February, in March, but will there be any impact on my, impact on my body? No, sir. Zero impact, you know, because in January and doing and leaving it and then again, starting in February, it was like starting for the first time. Okay. And if you have to, you know, what you have to do is you are reading and along with reading, just keep one day in the week when you are revising, you have to revise as well. If you're not revising, you're just going on reading, 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 chapter one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, after reading, reading, uh, reaching chapter 10, if you come back to chapter one, it will already be one month past and you're already forgotten what you read in chapter one. Okay? So it will be of no use. It will be like first time reading again. So that's why keep one day for revision every week and keep on revising so that you don't feel like hey, I'm reading it for the first time. It seems as, in, as if I'm reading for the first time. So keep on revising. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Guys, any other questions? Okay. So, sir, we'll go sir ahead. one more question, yeah. sir. Yeah. Sir, like um, what my faculty will be, they'll tell one source for me, like for studying. And someone else will tell one more other sources. Like, uh, it will be very confusing, like one which source which would refer. Yeah, yeah. So, 
it's the same as you know uh, it's that 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 is the case with upsc whether it is optional whether it is current affairs for example current affairs example i'm giving you current affairs someone tells me that you know i am reading vision is ka current affairs so i look at i find very yeah, very nice very nice so i start reading january current affairs i read from that then i i am just talking to my friend ki pata you know i finished january current affairs i finished this and that so he is asking me where did you read from i said i read from vision he said you know i am reading from drishti i think it's better than just just have a look i look at it and it i found it to be more colorful and you know uh, more facts it seems like there are more facts then i switch to drishti then next month i switch to you know uh, insights on india so every month i keep on switching what happens is you know by preparation actually gets ru- ruined so there is no one source that is perfect source and there is no one source that is pathetic source all source you know are good uh, good enough so you may find you know that there is certain topic that is mentioned in source a but not mentioned in source b but just for you know sake of one or two topics you cannot entirely change your source so just start with any one source starting may in the beginning only you know just give yourself you know five four five days to compare the sources which i will go through just compare them for four five days and then once decided that i will go with source a stick to source a and trust me just read source a keep on revising keep on revising solving mock tests doing the answer writing and all ye sab karke now after you have done all this you no know, your whatever source you had chosen that will be su- sufficient don't skip sources just stick to one source revise 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 do answer writing do answer writing revise do answer writing with one source only it will be su- sufficient okay, if you sir, keep on skipping you. sources that will you know really be difficult because you read marriage family from source a now you go to source b you again read marriage family from the same again you go to source 3 you again read marriage family from there only so you just you are not only able you are not able to go beyond chapter 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 because every time you start with chapter 1 by the time you reach chapter 3 you are now liking some other source there you go and you say okay now this is a fresh beginning again chapter 1 chapter 1 2 3 again you start liking some other source so you will read chapter 1 2 3 multiple times and rest of the syllabus will be left so don't skip sources okay thank you sir by, by the way tell me which which all sources you are studying Sir, for as per my for me, sir, I am hmm. referring Telugu Academy books, sir. They are very good books. And substituting it with like for like archaeological anthropology, I found igno materials are very good, sir. Very good. So there are many sources, and no source is a bad source. Okay. So you what you are following is very good. Telugu Academy books are very good, and igno material is also very good, right? But I follow totally different sources. You know, but even they are good. so like say it's like that you know you should have trust in the sources that you have chosen okay okay sir thank you sir welcome guys any other question no fine so now getting into some you know small tips we we just have 15 more minutes in 15 minutes i will just cover some small tips because tomorrow again we'll have a one hour session tomorrow also so we will not go uh, we will not stretch today beyond 4 you know 10 minutes past 4 or 15 minutes past 4 we'll finish by you know 15 minutes past 4 and tomorrow again we'll have the one hour session so some quick tips first thing uh, i think one tip i already have given you know regarding the diagrams the diagrams that you are making try to incorporate as many diagrams as possible practice your diagram so that you are able to make a good diagram a neat and clean diagram it doesn't have to be a mf fusan painting it has to be just a decent diagram it doesn't need to be perfect with you no know, shading and all not required it has to be a decent diagram so practice diagram without practicing exam mein jaake you cannot reproduce you have to practice diagrams also so diagrams one thing practice second thing use multiple colors for example i'm not asking you to use sketch pen and all blue pen blue ball point pen black ball point pen even two if you use you know it is very good because there are topics in anthropology where you have to show the difference for example there is a topic for example comp- competitive exclusion or gauss's law gauss's rule or competitive exclusion where it shows that when two species uh, you know are competing in the same environment then either one of them will uh, prosper and one of them will die out 
or they will change their niche i mean they will start feeding at different times and all so for that he you know um, use two uh, species of you know uh, paramoecium one was paramoecium caudatum and one was param paramoecium aurelia so when he used uh, you know when he, suppose he grows only paramoecium caudatum it grows like this he grows only paramoecium aurelia it also goes like this but when he grows them together what happens is this one of them flourishes the other one dies out now this diagram it will be much better if i use two colors If I use two colors, okay. So this is Paramoecium caudatum (PC) all by itself. If grown alone, Paramoecium aurelia if grown alone, and when they are grown together, then this PC green line goes up, and the blue guy it falls down. So these kind of things, you know, when you have to show two different, uh, differing things in the same diagram, then you can use two different colors: one blue and one black. so this actually gives a good very good effect to your diagram so practicing diagrams using colors third thing that i showed labeling only on the one side very neat and clean you know alignment wise uh, uh, you know this labeling so you do uh, you are doing labeling about different tribes so you know it should be like this all in one line very nicely okay all in one line alignment and then under the diagram you write figure what the figure is about you put the diagram inside a box these are the things that are very good plus when writing an answer suppose the question is about something and you start with the diagram no don't put your diagram in the beginning or in the end diagram should be somewhere in the between in the middle of the answer so the question is there is some question you write your answer you write your answer few lines you draw the diagram again you write your answer and finish your answer diagram should be in between the written text the diagram ko beech mein don't start with the diagram don't end end with the diagram diagram should be in between theek okay? hai so these are small small things that you know make your answer sheet look different from others and may help you get good marks okay because end of the day there are three things there is content you have to give very good content in your answer you have to give all the relevant materials uh, you know uh, all the different points of view the scholars name this that content then you have to have speed that is you have to finish your paper in time if you are not able to finish i am writing great content but not finishing the paper you know leaving out some 30 40 marks or question i would not get good marks you know so speed is there content is there and the third thing presentation so you have to have good content finish in time and also present your answer nicely like the diagram and all present it nicely so that your diagram your answer stands out from others theek okay? hai so this is regarding diagrams uh okay one more thing about diagram is create diagrams for example some diagrams in anthropology are given in all sources so you know small tradition and great, uh, little tradition great tradition everywhere we will find this gt lt this and then arrow coming like this arrow going like this parochialization universalization you find this kind of diagram some diagrams are you know uh, everyone uses the same diagrams try to create more diagrams that are your own diagrams so once you start studying very subject very nicely once you start standing uh, understanding the subject and following the subject thinking deeply about it in your mind you will be able to think of ways to represent the concept in diagrams create your own diagrams for example when you read cultural materialism 
can anyone in the class explain me about cultural materialism does anyone recall cultural materialism or at least the scholar who is associated with this school of thought okay no issues since you all are beginners that's not a problem marvin harris someone was answering if you guys answer in the you know uh, comment i have told you i will not be able to okay so no chats fine so marvin harris so marvin harris gave a concept that everything in the culture the most important thing in the culture is your technology your technology and how you get your food your economy technology and economy are the most important things and everything else stands on technology and economy technology and economy is the base your technology and economy they determine your institutions institutions like marriage family kinship these are because of determined by economy one simple example the tibetans or for example the khasa khasa people of uttarakhand's region called josar bawar j u a n s a r this region in uttarakhand this is uk not not uh, united kingdom uttarakhand the khasa people or the tibetans they have they do agriculture but the land is not very good the land is not very fertile and agricultural produce is not much land is very precious because whatever little land they have if land becomes even smaller if they if their land parcel becomes even smaller they will not be able to produce enough food to support their family you know so they don't want their land to become smaller jitna land hai whatever land they have they don't want their land to become smaller than that now so this is the economy part the land part is the economy part okay but what do they do so that their land doesn't get smaller anyone knows what do they do so that the lands don't get smaller land plots don't get smaller for example it's a family it's a family with four sons or five sons you know five sons are there in the family what kind of polyandry very good but something else all the five brothers marry the same girl what is it called it is called polyandry but what kind of polyandry fraternal polyandry you have to understand polyandry means one woman marrying several men but the men may not be related the men may be different they are not related to each other so that is non fraternal polyandry normal polyandry okay but if all the husbands are brothers like the pandavas and the draupadi this kind of marriage is called fraternal polyandry when the all husbands are brothers okay so when all the husbands are marrying the same woman the land will not get partitioned partitioned when they have own their their own separate wives and the wives say no no let's you know set up our own separate home then the fight breaks out and you know the land is par parceled you no know, divided but they have the same wife you know even she would not like you know to have a you know smaller land she feels that you know she is able to enjoy and her children will be able to enjoy the fruits of the lands of all the five brothers why to divide the land so fraternal polyandry because of the economic reason of shortage of food so coming to marvin harris cultural materialism technology and economy they determine the institutions like marriage and family and these institutions then decide the spiritual part the religion and the mythology for example these people of josar bawar they because of their economy poor land they are they they are doing fraternal polyandry so economy is de deciding the institutions now people ask them ki why do you have this kind of marriage brother you have you know so many guys marrying one woman why are you doing this so how do they justify it they justify it by saying that they are the descendants of the pandavas this they will tell you that they are the descendants of the pandavas and that's why they follow this 
so they are giving you a mythology to justify what is happening so marvin harris said marvin harris said that your economy or technology decides your institutions and institutions decide your mythology this is his theory so you if you know the concept well okay technology economy is the base of everything so you can make a diagram like this a triangle this is technology and economy this is institutions and this is your mythology a triangle where there is a base which marvin harris called called the infrastructure then there is a second layer called the structure and then superstructure so you can make a diagram like this for the theory of marvin harris so create your own diagrams you will be able to create your own diagrams very easily this is very simple diagram just a pyramid with three levels isn't it isn't it simple yes or no yes sir very simple diagram you can create your own simple diagrams for the concepts okay so that was regarding the diagrams now uh what else okay now one more tip that you can use to score well okay is examples case studies okay so fraternal polyandry i gave the example of the uttarakhand ka jawsar bawar khasa people or and the tibetans but you will find this example in almost every book most of the anthropology books will give this example so you have to find different examples because most of the guys are reading the same books so most of the guys are giving the same examples and case studies what do you do to make your answer different you have to find different examples that are not there in these books it is very simple you have google you have youtube just google fraternal polyandry in india and you will get or fraternal polyandry in the world so one more thing again this try to give a diverse geographically diverse example so when the question comes about for example you know pastoral tribes pastoral tribes so don't give example of only india or only you know any one place give example like this india india mein you have todas you have the gaddis and bakarwals africa in africa you have you know uh, the nuer the masai theek hai then you give so like this you know you, just give me one second guys okay so give your examples and case studies as diversified one geographically diverse different parts of the world now when i give the example like this i did one more thing i may know the example of india and africa but i may write them in the same sentence i may write like this i may write like this example example nuer uh, masai gaddi uh toda one line okay i know i know example from africa i know example from india i am writing them but i am not presenting them to the examiner in a way ki examiner when he is reading examiner will not notice anything if i present in this way pastoral tribes i write india and then i give indian examples africa i give african examples presenting this way will tell the oh ho oh, examiner will say acha oh, yeah i see he has given you know two different uh, countries and continents and then given examples oh nice 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 so you have the knowledge but you have to also got to present your knowledge in a way that the examiner sees it it should be visible to the to the examiner okay if you are giving an example that you feel you know is unique you have found out you know from some youtube documentary you have found out from some you know some source and you feel that others may not have this example you need to tell the examiner that look at this example i am sure no one else has given it and how do you do it you have to make the examiner notice your example 
examples. So put your examples in boxes. I'm just writing, writing, writing in the paragraph. I, I give some examples in between the paragraph. Who will see? The examiner doesn't have so much time. You know, they are checking 100 or 50 copies in a day. They also want to finish it quickly. You know, how, how to get noticed. So try to give your examples in such a way that it is noticed. Just put, in, put inside a box. Put inside a box. Example, examples are put inside a box or, you know, written separately, you know, like that. Giving definitions. So you are talking about culture, 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 and then you want to give definition of culture. So you give the definition in between like this. By Tyler, E.B. Tyler definition. And then you again resume your paragraph. So see the normal lines are like this, this, and the actual, the quotation I have written in a shorter space in between easily noticeable that here I'm writing a definition. So there are many tricks by way, which, you know, you can present your answer in such a way that it looks different from others. And if you have found out some case study, some example from some source, which you feel others don't, others will not have it. It's a unique example. Try to highlight that by putting it inside a box. Even if it's a case study, what is a case study? Case study is a detailed example. Case study is not a simple example of one word. Like, you know, when I'm said pastoral tribes, example, newer, it's an example, just one word, but case study is a detailed example. I'm giving you a more story like example that, you know, for example, um, think of a case study. Okay. For example, a case study regarding man nature spirit complex which paper is this in which paper paper one or two paper two paper two mm -hmm. who answered that um, noel it was expected from noel because noel we have done this in recently in the class others have you seen the syllabus guys have a properly look at the syllabus okay you should remember which part which topic is is uh, you know is, is in which paper so now when giving an, a, a case study of you know uh, this man nature spirit complex i may give the example of a tribe called onges located where where do you find onges kandavan nicobar great is it ashish yes sir okay so andaman nicobar me onges tribe what happened there is you know that the government had a very well-intentioned scheme of providing ration, free ration to these people. So government provided free ration to them. But these are hunting gathering tribes. Okay? Have been for thousands of years, they're doing hunting gathering. Suddenly, government is providing them at their doorstep, chawal dal, rice dal, sabji. Just cook and eat. And so this sudden change in their way of life, being cut off from the nature, it is having a bad impact on their health and a lot of them are falling sick. So when I write that, that's a detailed kind of example and it will become a case study. Detailed example is a case study. Now this is a case study, which is not there in any book. I have found out watching some documentaries on YouTube. So I will put that case study inside a box in the answer sheet. Nothing, just with a simple pen, just make a box around it. Make it clearly visible to the examiner that you have written something and so that examiner stops and goes through it. Okay. Getting it, guys? Okay, sir. So these are some of the small tips that I discussed in the next, that is tomorrow we'll have another one hour session. There I will try to discuss the three, four more tips that you can use, you know, and they're not rocket science. None of them is rocket science. It's just simple psychology. You have to think that an examiner Think of yourselves. If you have a lot of you, maybe teaching, some people teach, you know, uh, ko padate hai, you teach younger kids. So you have answer sheets to check. It is a hectic task. It is a very hectic task, you know, and you have to check 40, 50 of them. And trust me, anthropology, the books are so limited that a lot of people, a lot of people will have similar answers. So it makes the task even more boring, boring for the professor who is reading the same thing again and again, same thing. Okay. Man, nature, spirit complex, LP with the RT, Malay tribe, you know, uh, and they, the Malay tribe. So same thing again and again, same examples again and again and again. So that guy is getting bored. 
now that boredom can translate into you know just without properly reading the answer just giving marks without properly reading it can happen and can you do anything about it you can't you can't even get the copy of your answer sheet under rti upsc answer sheet sharing is not allowed you supreme court has given a ruling that upsc is not bound to share the answer sheets with you to check if your answer sheet has been checked properly or not the best that you can do from your side is to make your answer sheet interesting that is where the presentation comes so the psychology understand you have to understand that professor is bored you have your answers have to be such your presentation your diagrams and all have to be such that he stops and thinks okay i have been checking since the morning this one looks a little different let me go through this nicely that is what you have to do okay guys yes sir hello sir yeah sir i have one small doubt regarding gs sir can i ask uh which part of gs sir modern history sir like it's not doubt yeah. sir like yeah yeah ask me sir actually in my coaching institute like whatever the faculties are following sir they'll mm -hmm. follow the same lakshmikanth and uh, spectrum book and give us notes sir the okay. same points and same pattern will be there in the in my class notes also sir okay now what now what's the point of reading that book again sir like 400 okay. 800 pages okay okay i will tell you for gs your you are getting notes and you are talking about spectrum and lakshmikanth trust me agar had i been in your place i would keep the notes aside and read the book instead okay sir you are talking about lakshmikanth and spectrum they are two of the most indispensable books for your exam and upsc may give a question from some part of the book which may not be covered in the notes so it is always better to go through the book if so no had your notes been a little different had your teacher giving notes from some other source which are not available in your lakshmikan for example i when i, I was I, i had i have also taught polity at a place i do teach polity also i had taught polity uh, at a place where i had done some extra research what i had added was i have got you know lot of supreme court cases that in this supreme court case this this was regarding fundamental rights in fundamental rights for every article article 14 15 16 17 18 19 for every article i had shared with the students supreme court cases that in this supreme court case supreme court said this in this supreme court this so those things are not there in the lakshmikanth book so if your notes are such if the notes you get from the professors or your teachers are such that are apart from the book that are not there in the book not 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 there in the book and you can add it to increase the you know quality of what you read in the book then you should go through your notes but if the notes are made from the same book spectrum and lakshmikanth i will advise you to stick to the book rather than the notes okay sir okay thank okay. you sir welcome here any other questions no good and one more thing i will try to say some people say yeah lakshmikanth so bulky what to do um, you no know, spectrum uh, one girl a few days ago i was counseling her and she is saying ki i don't know i will have to read i will have to read spectrum it is so boring i just don't find it interesting if someone feels like that then you should not be preparing for upsc you know spectrum should you know not feel boring you read spectrum you start visualizing what is happening you know what the, the portuguese are coming these are coming that are coming aise ho raha hai waise ho raha hai you should try to imagine and make it interesting if you don't find it interesting then you will not be able to clear the exam because without interest you will not revise and if you don't revise you will not pass theek okay. hai so that will be it guys and uh, with that let's uh, finish wrap up the session today and let's meet up again tomorrow 3 pm okay okay sir thank you sir okay, thank you hope the session was uh, helpful and uh, let's meet tomorrow again so bye bye thank you sir welcome